What's going on everybody is Realistic with Realistic Productions doing another tutorial for SoundOracle.net and we're going to continue on with our fundamental series. This is week three and what we're going to do is we're going to go over 808s and we're going to talk about the 808 kick drums and what the fundamental frequencies are in there, what we want to consider to boost and some things that aren't maybe quite as important in the 808s that we might want to consider to cut. All right, let's dive in. So I got Pro Tools open up here, and as I always say, these techniques and tips will work in any DAW of your choice. You don't have to be using Pro Tools, and if you're capable of it, go ahead and open up your DAW of choice right now and do this along with me. You'll find that you'll learn a lot more if you do it with me versus trying to remember it for later. So we're going to be doing the fundamental frequencies of 808s. There's actually not a whole ton of fundamental frequencies with these. It's pretty simple, so this one should be a fairly short video, but I figured that I should still do it anyways because this is such a popular instrument. And so I'm going to go through a couple different types of 808s. I'm going to go through one that's got some pretty aggressive transients, one that uh, is really, really subby on the low end, one that's got some harsh distortion, and then another one that has a little bit more of the natural distortion. So let's go ahead and we'll just start with more of like a, a subby one because that's a little bit closer to the original here. And so what we're going to be seeing is the fundamental frequencies are going to live down here. No surprise there. It's a sub instrument. So let's listen here. So usually with 808s, the fundamental frequencies are going to be between 40 and 80 that that's usually where we're gonna see those right and there's gonna be a little bit down here but a lot of that's gonna be more some rumble but don't forget that there is gonna be a little bit in the high end here too there's gonna be some fundamental frequencies between 200 and 250 and usually there's some areas between 100 and 150 that you want to cut as well and then you usually don't have to do too much on the top end I'll show you there's really not much going on it's really just the transient that we're hearing so there's not too much sometimes you can cut that if you need to sometimes you just leave it alone and I would really recommend if you're trying to get to know more of how to get 808s to agree with things in the mix, we actually have a tutorial if you go under Sound Oracle's page, how to get your 808 and kick to be mixed together. We got one of those. And then we also have another one if you're looking to make your 808s just really stand out and be a little bit more aggressive. We have a tutorial on multiband saturation. So check those out too. This is just tutorial on the fundamental frequencies. So if you wanted to, you could cut all this top end. I usually don't. I let it be, but you know, you could. And then another thing too that you might want to consider is maybe not any type of high pass filter maybe but maybe like a low shelf just to get rid of some of the rumble you could depending on the type of music you could leave it in there too but this is generally an area where you don't need because we can't really hear this frequency anyway so it kind of helps just to get rid of that sometimes so it doesn't muddy it but you know still where some of it's catching through so you're not just doing a, a full low cut there and then another area that you might want to cut i was saying was between 100 and 150 it just kind of resonates a little bit see how that's got a little bit of a build up there sometimes that that's worth cutting right there little bit there too and then some areas where you could boost are down here between 40 and 80 like I said those are the fundamental frequencies I I try to scope for a little bit more between 50 and 60 myself just because sometimes between 80 and 90 that's usually where I like the kick drum to sit and then anything too low on the 808 I feel like just might overcrowd the mix a little bit so generally you want to look for these areas you can hear at 50 that's got some nice power to it but 60 that's where the magic's at 
for this one. And honestly, there's just something about 60 hertz that there's some magic in the low end for that. So just kind of keep that in mind. You don't have to go by that every single time. You know, like I said, don't make or break your records off of these guidelines that I'm giving you. You know, it's going to be different between every song and it's going to be different between every single 808. So, but this is just an area where it just naturally sounds really good at that 60. And then another area too, uh, you might get some of that aggressive punch in there between 2 and 250. You can kind of hear that right there. I find with a lot of 808s, I usually don't have to boost too much as far as the really high quality sample 808s that I get, usually from soundoracle.net or theproducerkit.com. A lot of those are already EQ'd very well on the top end, so I'm usually not boosting too much. Uh, a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm finding places where I can cut just so it can fit a little bit in the mix. So those are the fundamental frequencies on 808s. I got three other ones just to kind of go through so you can see the the differences. And, and I'll just kind of quickly go through and, and boost and cut some areas of these so you can see those general areas. See, I'm really not affecting this right now by doing this. An area to cut. Can you hear that build up? You know, that might be worth cutting just a little bit there. And then there might be another place up here I can hear a little bit too. Yeah, you can hear that build up right there. And those things, you know, by the 808 by itself might sound good with all the frequencies in, but when you got a whole bunch of stuff going on with the mix, some of those buildups can really create a lot of clashes and everything. And let's just find where that fundamental is. Yeah, I'm getting maybe at like 64 there. See how when I did that, it punched up a little bit more. And then I got one that's got some more aggressive harsh distortion on it. A lot of nasty reson resonating buildup at 104. You can really hear that. That There's so much going on in that area. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. Good energy at like 54. You know, and this might be one where uh, you wouldn't want to boost in this 2 to 250. It, it might get a little overpowering, but just know that some of that punch is that's where it's living. That's kind of where that's living, but again, I wouldn't really boost in there, and I might not even boost this area. I just might cut some areas and stuff and just kind of more of a volume thing at that point. And then I got one that's got a little bit more of a softer distortion. Again, you can hear when I'm doing this low cut. You know, it's barely changing it. There's a little bit of a resonating build up around 106. Then we got a little bit, I think, up here too. Yeah, at about 169, 170 right there, worth kind of getting rid of. And then really you see that a lot of this fundamental is between 55 and 70 on this one. We'll find that punch. See where that's punching a little bit right there? Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, there's really not much going on up here either. So those are the fundamentals of 808s. Really not too much going on with those. This one was definitely a short one uh, just because a lot, they're pretty simple. They come from sine waves, 808s, so it's a really simple waveform to begin with, so they're not too complex. I did want to give you a couple examples of different types of 808s, ones with distortion and ones with a little bit more sub and ones that are kind of layered to have a little bit more of a transient on there as well and like i said before if you want to know more about mixing with 808s we do have a tutorial on how to mix an 808 and a kick together that one's really popular a lot of good information in there we go over side chaining we go over carving out frequencies go over some balance things and go over kind of figuring out which instrument is going to get what frequency. And then I do have the other tutorial on multiband saturation that can really help with bass instruments just pop through the mix a little bit more, including 808s. So hopefully you get some stuff out of this tutorial. So I'm hoping that you got a lot out of this tutorial today. Hopefully there was some information that was useful. If you're getting a lot out of this but you want to see more, please feel free to comment below. Let us know what kind of tutorials that you want to see in the future, and Oracle and I can definitely make that happen. We're always trying to find the content that you want to see. If you're liking what you're hearing from me, you can find me everywhere on social media at Realistic Productions. You can find me at the web, realisticproductions.net. You can find my man Sound Oracle everywhere at Sound Oracle. And if you're looking for the best 808s, the best kicks, the best snares with the craziest loops and samples you can find on the internet right now, go to soundoracle.net. All right, till next time.